This daily drawing exercise of a pineapple is a great subject for practice in learning to control our marks and really considering what marks are going to create the effect that we want because a pineapple is such a highly textured surface and it has both regularity but also randomness and complexity as well and the lower half of the pineapple is really quite separate from the upper half of the pineapple now if i were drawing with pencil it would be a bit more straightforward because i could do some roughing outlines to get these hexagonal segments of the lower section of the pineapple organized and then i could either just do them very lightly and cover them in my final marks or i could erase them at some point or erase unhelpful ones at the end but i'm drawing directly in ink so i have to consider my marks very carefully and i have to create this pattern of these hexagonal shapes that aren't just hexagonal shapes because they also have a protuberance of growth coming off them into some basically novel shape effect and of course how these how these hexagons look change as they curve around the side so we want to maintain that that generalized pattern of the curving hexagons but we also have to allow for the fact that that the, the growth that comes off each of them, that the position of that growth changes as they move around as well. The ones we look straight at, the, the center point of that, that, that growth is more or less in the center, but as the hexag hexagonal shapes move around left and right, where that growth comes together, moves to the left or to the right. Of the shape so we have to allow for the distortions of positioning at the same time as doing these hexagons now this is the sort of subject where I try and draw accurately and particularly in the early stages I try and pretty much capture the the exactness of what I'm looking at because I know that as I then move to the left and right and up and down I'm going to become more gestural and I'm going to be drawing more from my sense of what I know is there than the exactness. But I need, to, I need to establish in my mind and in my marks fairly accurately at this early start. So in a sense, the first maybe third of the drawing, I'm training myself to see the individual units of the pineapple the lower half and to work out create marks that can represent them adequately i've decided to not particularly worry about hatching for shade and shadow on the lower part of the pineapple because i think there's going to be enough lines there for the scale with which i'm drawing now the other thing we need to do as we start to approach the edges, the left and right edges and the base of the pineapple is to start to establish the overall shape as well. It's easy drawing in this technique, in this, this way of progressing and starting and progressing the drawing, it's easy to end up with each perhaps little unit looking okay, but overall a misshapen shape so i start to put some dots at one point it's at this point i start to put some dots to help guide me about where the outside edge of the pineapple will be so that i can create a roundedness and this is where i particularly will if necessary deviate from drawing exactly what's in the reference because i need to draw what will look feasible in my overall drawing one the one thing that i'm pr probably most unhappy with about this pineapple is that um, the base doesn't round up smoothly enough it's a bit of a squared off effect and that came from simply focusing on a different visual element of the pineapple as i was drawing those those bottom corners 
and I just went out too far so that I couldn't then bring them back up without widening the pineapple too much. When I showed the drawing to my wife, after I finished it, her initial reaction was, there's something not quite right about the bottom. It's always good to have a critic on hand to help point out where we can improve next time. But now it's, it's more straightforward because I'm much more comfortable and familiar with the shapes and the marks I'm making. And also I'm not so concerned about exactness to the reference photo. I'm also paying attention to the silhouette edge. The silhouette on each side of the pineapple is really slightly different and that's because of what part of the hexagonals are actually edge onto us. On the right hand side where really the, the edge, the silhouette edge is really coming down the center of those shapes but on the left hand side it's not quite so on the edge and so we have a we have a softer silhouette on the left hand side so you'll see there are basically lots of short marks because there are no really long lines there really are no long lines that we can draw this drawing took me uh, just under 25 minutes to do in real time and you're watching it now being drawn in double time so if you want to see me draw it real time just use that cog icon that you can see on the screen and reduce this to half time and then you'll watch me draw it in real time and so now I get the the crown of the pineapple this is a fairly small crown. Depending on the variety of pineapple, these leaf portions on top can be much larger and have a different edge. This one has a very fine toothed edge. These, th these leaves are covered in lots of very small and very sharp teeth. And so we want to capture those but we want to capture the effect of them. We don't want to have to be drawing every single one. And so now I need to establish a different style of mark making to create a different textural effect. And yet one that somehow combines with the marks lower down. I don't think I drew a single mark that was more than, I don't know, two and a half centimetres in this whole drawing. And this is why thinking marks, not lines, is so important. If I was thinking lines and focusing on lines, I might have been tempted to draw with my pen uh, long lines to create the shapes of the lower part of the, the pineapple. And yet, while that may have in some way have been representative in a stylized form, what we see, certainly if we were aiming at realism, it wouldn't have been, I think, a helpful way to go. So now I'm just paying attention to these fronds. Not really fronds, I guess they are leaves. It looks a bit like a palm tree though, doesn't it? I'm looking at these fronds and I am putting some shading on them to create a stronger sense of three dimensions to give some sense of light source although I don't want to overdo it because I'm not going to do that on the lower section of the pineapple so it really is careful observation I've also made a mark if I haven't already made it I make it very soon I've put a dot somewhere where I think the top of the pineapple is going to be and that will just help me with my scale as I move up. As I move up that's not the uppermost front 
but it is good when our drawing moves out in this sort of progression to put some marks to help judge the overall positioning of the drawings and it, I find this helps keep scale as well. And so now we go with just representing the little thorns on the edge of the pineapple. It, this is a slightly overripe pineapple. It smells wonderful. It's a shame to have drawn it from a photo and not to have drawn it from life because then I could have enjoyed the fragrance of it as an extra sensory stimulation to the experience. And then I'm now just finishing off these lower sections and now starting to look overall and do those pulling together of different parts sections that look too light, unfinished bits where I haven't quite got the silhouette edge correctly and making some adjustments as well for the overall shape, the overall silhouette. And I noticed that the bottom of the pineapple isn't as rounded as it should be so I go back to it and just try and add a little bit to the base to make it rounder. I'm not sure I was so successful in that and that's something to pay attention to next time as my wife so helpfully pointed out for me. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, this pineapple is a great drawing exercise. Such a challenge for our marks in creating very varied texture. So I hope you give it a go and you'll find the reference photo on my channel community page.